One of the most common questions I get asked by PhD students is how to prepare for your thesis defense. So I'm going to give some tips in this video, but first of all, I want to say that the real preparation for your defense starts as soon as you begin your PhD. And the most important thing that you can do is get used to discussing your work with other academics, getting feedback, talking about ideas, because that is going to be ultimately the best possible preparation for when you get to the defense. So you do not want your thesis defense to be the first time that you're getting feedback on your work. So the defense itself, the format varies greatly from one institution to another and between different countries. So in my case, because I did my PhD in the UK, I had a Viva examination with two examiners, one from my own institution and one external. And it was basically like a long interview to talk about all the different aspects of my research. In other countries, it's common to have a public defense with a panel of examiners and an audience of colleagues and maybe also family and friends. So the process and the experience can be quite different. So the first and most obvious tip is simply to know the format of your defense, knowing whether, you, whether or not you have to give a presentation, how long that presentation needs to be, all of those kind of things. Now you can do this by simply checking the administrative guidelines, talking to your supervisor. But another thing that you can do is talk to people who have been through the process in your institution. So PhD students who've been through exactly what you're going to go through because they will be in the best possible position to tell you what to expect. And if you're at an early stage of your PhD and you're at an institution where they do public defenses, then attend one, see what it's like. And then when it's your turn, you know exactly what to expect. Now, if you do have to give a presentation, then the thing to remember is that you don't have to cover absolutely everything that you know. Your presentation will be followed by some questions. So if there's something that the examiners want to know more about, then they will ask you. One of the worst things that you can do for a presentation is show up with a hundred slides for a 10 minute presentation and then try and rattle through everything as fast as you possibly can. That's going to be extremely stressful for you. And it's also going to be difficult for the examiners or the audience to follow. So it's better to say less and to focus on your strongest content Focus on what you really want to communicate to the examiners. And then, as I said, they can always ask you questions if there's something that's not in your presentation that they want to ask about. Of course, remember, they will have read your thesis. So anything that's not in your presentation, they will have read anyway. And then they will guide the conversation wherever they want it to go. Of course, it's always good to practice your presentation as well. If you can do this in front of an audience, if you can do a mock examination of any kind, that's always really good. But if you don't have that opportunity, then you can practice yourself, but practice out loud. Sometimes what people do is practice simply by looking through the slides without speaking it out loud. So try to actually say it out loud, even if you're in an empty room. Now this can feel a little bit embarrassing. It can feel a little bit silly, but it's not gonna be as stressful as the defense itself. So anything that you can do just to practice under slightly stressful conditions will be good preparation for when you actually have the defense. And then you will know how long it takes you to get through the different sections. You'll know if your presentation is too long or too short and you can adjust accordingly. Now, whatever the format of your defense, whether, you're on, whether or not you have to give a presentation, everybody dreads the awkward question that horrible moment when the examiner asks you something that you don't know the answer to. What people sometimes do to try to prepare for this is simply cram as much as possible, read as much literature as possible on everything that could possibly come up. I think this is a little bit counterproductive because no matter how much you read, there will always be more. And sometimes what happens is you just realize how much you don't know and that affects your, affects your confidence. So I think it's better to accept that you don't know everything. You're not expected to know everything and find a way to answer questions that you don't know the answer to. So the way that I recommend you do this is to actually say, well, I don't know, but I would guess that because of this reason and this reason, 
this is what would happen. But you would need to do this kind of experiment or this kind of study in order to find out, find out for certain. So the examiner isn't necessarily looking for you to get the exact right answer. There may not be a right answer. Maybe nobody knows the answer to this particular question. And they're just asking out of curiosity or to see how you think through a problem that you don't know the answer to. So as long as you show your thought, pro thought process, as long as you show that you can think as a professional academic researcher having a peer-to-peer -peer conversation with another academic, that is what they are looking for. So you just say, I don't know, but... And then that can lead to an interesting conversation as you discuss that particular idea. Now, while you're not expected to know everything, of course, there will be some core content that you are expected to know well. That content which is central to your research and to your thesis. But this content is set by you, not the examiner. And it's determined by what you put into your thesis. So as you're writing your thesis, you are choosing the ground that you want to defend. So it makes sense to focus on the areas where you are stronger rather than focusing on the areas where you are weaker and then trying to put things in to fill those gaps. If you're putting in a lot of content to try to pretend that you know a particular area really well or to show the examiner how much you know, it will come across when you're less confident or less knowledgeable in those areas, and then it's much more likely that the examiner asks you about those areas where you are weaker. So as part of the preparation for your defense, it's choosing the content that you put into your, into your thesis and focusing primarily on your strongest stuff. So in your preparation for the defense after you've submitted, what you can do is strengthen some of those core areas. One way you can do this is look at more recent articles that have maybe been published since you wrote your literature review or since you th submitted your thesis. The way to find these papers is to think of a handful of core papers that your research absolutely relies upon. So in most cases, there'll be you know, maybe 10, possibly 20, rarely more than that, core essential papers that if they didn't exist, your research wouldn't be possible. These will be the things that you've referred to again and again and again throughout your research. Now, it's likely that anybody else doing similar research to you is going to cite some of those same key papers. So if you look those up and check the cited by information and look for recent citations of those core papers, that's a very quick way of updating your knowledge of the latest, most relevant literature. But this updated literature search is focused around your research, not around all of the gaps in your knowledge because they are impossible to completely fill. Now, no matter how well you prepare, when the examination comes, you will be nervous. It will be really weird if you weren't nervous because everything that you've been working towards for the past several years comes down to this one event. So what's the best way to deal with those nerves? Now, the day before or the couple of days before your examination, I think it's good to think of anything that you can do to be as prepared as possible in terms of little practicalities. So for example, what are you going to wear? Do you have those clothes prepared? Are they clean and ironed and ready to go? Is that decision made? If you have to travel to your defense, do you have that planned? Is everything prepared so you know exactly where you have to be and how you're going to get there with enough margin for error so that if anything goes wrong, then you've got some safety nets, you've got some margin of error built in. Now, as I'm recording this, it's in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, so there are not many in-person defenses happening. Most of them are happening online. So in that case, what you can do is prepare this space where you are going to do your defense. So where are you going to do it? What is the background like? You don't want to be doing your thesis defense in front of an unmade bed, for example. So choose exactly where you're going to do it and have that all set up. Make sure your desk is nice and clear. You've got a nice background. All your clothes are ready, those kind of things. Another quick tip if you're doing it online is to get hold of an internet cable rather than using Wi-Fi because that's usually more stable. You don't want to be worried about internet stability 
Of course, some of that is outside of your control, but if you use a cable, it tends to be a little bit more, a little bit more reliable. So anything that you can think of in terms of little practical details, try and do those in the days before your examination, partly so that you give yourself something to do, and also partly to know that you've taken care of everything that you can. On the day of the examination itself, the worst part is often the waiting, the waiting to start, because there's not a lot that you can do. So to minimize, it won't eliminate, but to minimize some of that stress, first of all, avoid caffeine, because that is only going to add to the anxiety. And you can give yourself some really easy, simple things to do. Just make a to-do list of random tasks just to keep yourself busy so you've got somewhere to direct that nervous energy. Again, it won't eliminate that nervous energy, but it at least channels it in some way. Then once the defense actually starts, you might find, a lot of people report this, you might find that the knowledge just takes over and that when you're talking about your work, you know, the nerves kind of disappear because you're just focused on that, on that conversation. But of course, you may still be a little bit nervous. You might find yourself talking really quickly. You get stuck on a particular train of thought. And in some cases, you might even forget what the original question is. In that case, it's okay to slow down, to say to the examiners, I'm sorry, I got caught up in my train of thought there. Um, what was the original question again? Or if they ask a question that you're you know, unclear about or you don't quite understand, you can ask them to clarify or to repeat the question. It's okay to ask for a little bit of time to think. All of these things are okay. The examiners expect you to be nervous and they will help you out. So if you catch yourself talking too fast, going off on a train of thought, slow down, bring yourself back to the original question, give yourself a little bit of time to breathe, and then you know, give, it, give it your best shot. Like I said, the examiners expect you to be nervous and they will help you out. Now, even though it is this big, scary, kind of stressful thing, Often people report that they actually enjoy the defense. And the reason is that it's, for many people, the only opportunity that they get to spend a couple of hours talking to people about what they've been doing for the last few years, to be talking to experts in the field who are interested in what you've done. It's very rare to get that opportunity to go into that much depth. And it can actually be quite a pleasant enjoyable experience. So if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps other people to find it because it feeds into the algorithm and they will show it to more people. If you know somebody who is preparing for their defense, please do forward the video to them. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are published. And also, if you'd like to know more about what I do, check out the links below to my websites. There are two of them. It was jameshaytonphd.com, where I have hundreds of blog posts on all things PhD, and also the PhD Academy, where we do courses. We've got recorded courses on all kinds of aspects from academic writing to time management, working with academic literature, those kind of things. We also do weekly Zoom calls, and we've got a whole community of PhD students that you can connect with. So check that out in the link below. That's it from me. Best of luck if you have a defense coming up. Comment below, let me know how it went, and I'll see you next time.